Okay, everybody, I am going to make an Asian dish tonight. I used to fly to Japan a lot. Um, my last trip with Northwest Airlines internationally was actually in Kyoto, but I spent a lot of time in Tokyo, and Northwest Airlines actually owned a hotel in Narita. So um, I was looking through my stuff, and I was like, I'm hungry for this curry. So tonight I'm making tofu, which is shirataki. Shirataki is basically made from a root of a plant, and they mix it with water, and it becomes hard, and they just put lime in it, and then they put it in a pasta maker. So um, shirataki is made from a root called a con. It's like a cognac, but it's not the cognac you're thinking. It starts with a K. It's a K cognac, and they take and they make a flower out of the root. And then they mix it with water and there's a process but anyway I bought it um, and I've never tried it um, with this dish typically they're supposed to use udon noodles you can find that anywhere um, or you can use regular pasta or you can use this vermicelli or you can use uh, the buckwheat noodles you can use anything you want or you can make rice so I'm gonna show you how to do this basically we're just gonna take our onion which I've already prepared and you're going to um, cook these, caramelize them a bit. Cook them to the caramelized. I have in this glass here, I, um, I keep dried mushrooms around because I don't want them to go bad in the fridge. And I bought these at the Asian store. So I just boiled some water and then I poured it in this cup. So I'm just basically rehydrating some mushrooms. I'm going to put that in my soup which is going to go in that bowl right there. So in the meantime, we're going to brown up some of these onions. They say to cut them really, really thin. And then um, it's a pretty simple dish. But you're not making, it's very similar kind of to our American um, French onion soup. American French onion soup, what an oxymoron. But uh, you know what I mean. Everybody's familiar with French onion soup. So you just have to caramelize these. And I'm going to add a little bit of butter to that, just because it does seem to help caramelize things. Give me a second. I had a stand. I had everything all ready to go, but um, here we are with this one. My other, I was just going to use my tablet, but I'm using my phone instead. So everybody knows how to caramelize onions. So we're doing that. And then to that, we're going to add any kind of meat you want. I um, just put a big pork in the crock pot, so I have tons of pork. So I'm going to use pork. And then typically you're going to put the carrots. I'm going to put the carrots in there now as well so that it will begin to cook. So I'm adding my carrots. And then you would add some um, chives if you wanted to. I have chives in the garden, but it's dark out. I'm not going outside. I'm terrified of snakes to get chives from my garden. So um, you just cook this up, your yummy carrots and your onions, and let them do their thing. I'll turn this up a little bit. I just got the stove, so just kind of learning how to use it. And um, we're gonna add a couple other things. So it's gonna be a soup. So what's in a soup? It's gonna be my stock that I used from my crock pot, but you can use bouillon cubes, basically two cups of liquid that's flavored with any kind of bouillon cube or anything like that beef or vegetarian whatever it is you wish I'm also going to add some black sesame seeds again I just have these so I'm going to use them and I have mixed inside of here this is going to thicken it up I put one teaspoon of cornstarch with one teaspoon of water and it looks milky that's going to thicken it up once you add everything I added some onion powder to this mixture I've already put it in here. I put onion powder in there. Only thing I've not added is the curry. So in here, I've already added, well, they use uh, a certain type of um, vinegar. It's not necessary. Just use any kind of vinegar. You don't need the special Asian vinegar. I use balsamic, one teaspoon of that. And then soy sauce. They said to use one teaspoon, but I like it a lot. So I did more like five. It's in here. And then sesame, so sesame seed oil is like good in everything. It's kind of like Asian butter. It's fantastic. And basically in this recipe, you're supposed to put sesame oil, soy, their Marin, M-I-R-I-N. It's basically a vinegar. So you can use any vinegar. 
um, onion powder and this one with your soy sauce. I'm also going to add my hydrated mushrooms. So once these are a little bit um, to the consistency I like, then I'm going to add the curry powder. Now the curry powder, um, generally, you don't add it unless you got you got to actually cook it for a minute. Um, if not, you can't. It doesn't release the flavors. You can't just add curry powder to a liquid because it makes it nasty. You gotta actually cook or toast the curry powder for just a second so that it releases all the um, aroma of the oils in the curry. And again, with the curry, there's so many different kind of curries. Um, I had a lot of fun one year. I traveled the world trying to figure out which curry I liked the best. So I came up with this one. Jamaican curry is my favorite. They have Indian curry. You have Thai curry. You have Oh, good lord. You have so many. We even have Japanese curry. Now, if you go to the Japanese or you go to the Asian stores, you will find the Japanese curry. Um, it, they're in blocks. They look like chocolate, but those are really awesome to use. But I don't have any of that, so I'm going to do it from scratch. So, um, use some curry. Any kind that you like. I highly recommend the Jamaican curry. Now, you can make curry hot, spicy by adding what? You add your red peppers or whatever it is to it. I prefer the regular taste of Jamaican curry. I'm crazy about it. So um, with this, I've also added in this here, I've added some ginger, onion powder. Again, the um, vinegar, they call for mirin vinegar, M-I-R-I-N, but I don't have it. Soy sauce, and I always recommend sesame oil in any kind of Asian dish. So, um... And these noodles are the ones that I'm going to be using today. These are, again, the um, shirataki. What they're famous for is there are actually, look at the carbs, three carbs in this whole thing. So those of you who are on huge carb diets, low-carb diets, or gluten-free diets, this would be something you may want to start buying. And they also have um, other different brands. But just YouTube shirataki, and you will learn a little bit more about this carb-free option. Um, the gentleman at the store must have thought I was fat because he wanted me to try it. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll buy it. <laughs> and it doesn't really keep too well. So what I did was I actually froze it. They tell you not to freeze it, but I did. I froze it. And then I thawed it out in water, and it came out fine. And then it has a bit of a um, strong flavor to it, they say. And that's from the lime they use for the, um, for the process that they make it. So what I did was I actually soaked this in water first for a minute. And then, um, and there you go. So... This looks like it's coming along pretty good. Oh, sorry about that. I'm going to cause fog. This looks pretty good. i um, surprised how fast it's coming along. I'm going to turn it up a little bit more. But it looks like the um, onions are definitely caramelized. In caramelization, you do not add salt while you're caramelizing onions. Because if you do, it makes it harder for the sugar to be released from the onion. That's what I've heard. And it seems to be true. So... When you're caramelizing the onion, do not add any salt and pepper at this point. Now, I did want to toast some things. So, um, sesame seeds, these are the black ones. Um, adding them to it, and I'm going to toast these sesame seeds. And I really like sesame seeds a lot, so I'm adding a lot. <laughs> I'm going to let that toast for a minute. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to get my curry ready. So, with the curry, um, this is what I was talking about releasing... You're going to use two to three teaspoons of curry. I always cook by, by look, the look. So I just kind of cover it like that. That's probably way too much curry for most people, but I love curry. And here we go. So I'm going to release. You don't want to burn it because it won't burn now. But you just want to see how the steam is releasing. Oh, yum, yum, yum. And that's good enough. So um, now you need to add liquid to your curry. So I'm adding the stock that I have left from my um, crock pot when I made my pork, picnic pork, the other day. The dogs really like that. And to my recipe, it's going to be extra scrumptious and delicious because I'm incredibly in love with the miso soup. I'm sure everyone's had miso soup at the sushi places. If you have not ever had miso soup, I highly recommend it. It's full of protein. I'm trying to open this package. And it looks like this when you buy it. Now this miso soup, you only need one teaspoon per cup. You can also make a like a broth if you're not feeling well, or you're in a hurry and you want something quick to eat. Um, you can just buy some miso, put it in a coffee cup, and microwave it. 
so I keep this in my fridge. It's basically fermented soybeans, and it's so delicious and everything if you like Asian flavored things, which of course, obviously I do. So I'm adding that. Now the recipe does not call for that, but I put it in everything. I even marinate my chicken with it. And so if I have it, I'm gonna use it. But you can also find it in the refrigerated section at the Asian store. Um, again, I just kind of got used to it. This is um, the brand that I bought, probably because it was a better price, a better value. Then you're gonna have different colors. I would go for this color, because I just know about it, it's delicious, and that's what I like. So now I'm gonna add the um, this mixture, which I had already blended, the um, onion powder, the ground ginger, and I put one teaspoon of flour in here, and soy sauce and the um, sesame oil and a splash of vinegar. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour that in there. Okay. I'm making a great big mess. That's okay. It's gonna be so good. Oh my God. I love the stuff. <laughs> and um, there was a store, was actually, if you look it up on YouTube, in Tokyo, Japan, there was a store called um, Coco Curry, C-O-C-O -C -O Curry. So all of the flight attendants and pilots, as soon as we landed, we would still be in our uniforms. We'd run across the street from our hotel and run in there and get some of this yummy curry, Japanese curry, from the Coco Curry store. They're very famous. You can look it up. And um, they served it with rice, or they would take shavings of their certain meats and put it in there. Well, this one, I'm going to use the pork. But I used to get the chicken when I went there. It was so good. Oh, my goodness. So I'm adding my pork to it too. And um, and this is this is what it looks like. But a lot of Americans, I bet they don't know how to do it from scratch. I really love curry, so I kind of took the time to learn how to make it. And again, traditionally in the Coco Curry store, COCO -C -O Curry in uh, Japan, they would serve it with rice, and you would just choose your beef or your um, or whatever it was you wanted. Now I'm gonna save the um, mushroom juice i'm actually putting it in there i think it's pretty hydrated you're supposed to throw the juice away but i like it so i'm putting it in my soup so i just added the mushrooms you can use regular button mushrooms or whatever it is you have or you can put no mushrooms in there it just depends and a lot of people also some people put um, broccoli or snow peas do whatever you want so um the next step is going to be to add my thickening agent so the thickening agent, once again, was just one teaspoon of cornstarch and one teaspoon of water. And it looks really milky, you can see it in here. So I've got to mix it up in the one-handed bandit tonight. Let me mix this up. It looks like milk, so funny. Yep. And I like my carrots to be al dente. This is gonna be good. So when I did cut the carrots, just to let you know, I did cut them very, very thin. And this is going to thicken up. And then you take this and you can pour it over, like I said, rice. You can actually make regular pasta. And then you have to cook it first, set it aside, and then add pasta to it. And then you're good to go. Um, typically, they'll serve it in a bowl like that. And then they'll put chives over the top and an egg. They use a lot of quail eggs in, uh, in Japan. So if you wanted to put make this really really hot and drop an egg on it you could i'm not into that right now but that's another traditional thing you'll see there so i hope this helps so basically i'm going to put this which i've already cooked in my bowl and then i'm going to pour these this yummy curry over the top of it gonna thicken up because we put the um, cornstarch in there okay I hope that helps I hope someone tries it oh my god I'm serious it's so good I'm telling you, you've never tasted anything like it it reminds me sort of um, a gravy like the best tasting gravy you've ever had in your life it reminds me of that and I'm super excited that I learned how to make it from scratch because you can buy the already made curry, but I would much rather have fresh. 
So this video is a bit longer than it needs to be. So we're going to cut it short. You have a great day. Bye.